of floods here because a lot of the times it's these tropic tropical systems that bring us the floods here in central Texas this time of year. We're really getting into the summer, uh, but we have all sorts of different types of floods. Right, absolutely. And going to the tropics, we've got storms moving in over the Pacific that has brought a major uh, flooding storms and some historic storms moving mm -hmm. over the, from the Pacific. Uh, pushing over the mountains of Mexico, redeveloping and then stalling. It's that meandering. It's the stalling of these systems that really produce the torrential downpours. And then, of course, we have any storm moving in from the Gulf. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in recent decades, they've even done some studies where they kind of slow down a little bit, stall out. And uh, that's what Harvey did, producing significant rain uh, for the Houston area, especially. So we've got multiple ways of flooding. We have more larger scale cyclone scale types of storms but then we all also have you know really tiny meso scale events that could produce flooding as well right so the different types of flooding have more to do with the speed at which it floods flash flooding you heard chief meteorologist david yaman say we live in flash flood alley this is quick this happens within uh you know 10 15 minutes we saw this what april 20th i believe when we had that one storm set up over north austin drop four inches of right. rain the aerial flood this is more of a gradual so this would be a couple of hours when we typically see a severe thunderstorm come in and and all of a sudden, after an hour or two, a flood advisory gets put up because we're starting to see some ponding, some low-lying areas uh, get flooded out here. But it's not necessarily widespread. The widespread river flooding is where we really run into issues, and this could be slow. I mean, those river warnings go sometimes for right. two, three days. Yeah, and a lot of people who maybe haven't lived in Austin for a long time may think, you know, when in, in the forecast, a few inches of rain, is in the forecast and they don't think it's a big deal. But the reason why we are in Flash Flood Alley has to deal with our topography here with the changing elevation from the hill country uh, to us, basically east of I-35 becoming uh, nearly flat. But also there's not much soil. Underneath the soil, a few inches is, is hard bedrock. So there's only so much that this water uh, can soak into the ground before it runs off. And so that is why we always need to be aware when we start to use language involving flash flooding. Absolutely. And just something else to think about, something that we always remind you of whenever it rains here in Central Texas, we want to be very mindful of what's getting into our local waterways, what's flowing to the rivers, what's flowing into the lakes. Any of this can unfortunately cause more algae growth. We're talking about grass clippings, fertilizer, as well as pet waste. If any of that's in your yard, we want to make sure we're cleaning that up properly because a lot of this uh, has phosphorus in right. it. Once that phosphorus what gets washed down with the rainwater into the storm drains, gets spit out there in Ladybird Lake or Lake Travis, we get this unwanted algae. And a lot of that, you know, we've been talking about recently uh, coming in the form of this blue-green algae that is right. very harmful to pets and humans. Right, and one of the biggest things about this is the initial flooding kind of right after the event is when you see the most amount of pollutants, the most amount of pet waste, because it's far reaching, uh, basically in the watershed of all those creeks, all those areas is now flushing in. That's when it's really bad. And then, you know, a few days better, it gets better in terms of the quality of the water. But once the flow of the water gets slower and slower as we get towards right. kind of drier drought stages, that's when that algae really becomes a problem when you have that st the stagnant, not moving water, and then especially along the edges. And you can often visually see it, so you always want to try to avoid uh, going near that, and especially your pets. Yeah, it's definitely tempting to think, you know, when we get a good gully washer, a good rain yeah. shower, um, it's cleaning your yards, right? But unfortunately, all it's doing is transporting the bad into an area where we don't want it. So uh, we continue the conversation of flood awareness here on the CW Austin. Stick around. Your national forecast is coming up.